Hello everyone, this is a video lecture recorded for the Artificial Intelligent Planning course in the online learning community of Coursera. The topic of this talk is how to use AI planning in medicine. Okay, something about me before starting. I got my PhD in computer science uh, less than two years ago in the University of Granada in Spain. I developed uh, several knowledge engineering techniques for modeling planning and scheduling domains uh, using the HTN paradigm and I used uh, these techniques in three different domains in e-learning, healthcare and business process management. Now I am doing a postdoc uh, research uh, fellowship in the University of Haifa in Israel and I am working in a very interesting project called MobiGuide which is uh, aimed to create a clinical decision support system for physicians and patients to manage the care process of two different diseases, gestational diabetes and atrial fibrillation, and the idea is to use this system anytime and everywhere. So I will start uh, showing several applications in the real world of how to use AI planning in the domain of medicine. So one example is how to schedule the beds that are needed in an hospital for all the patients that come on a daily basis. Another example is um, how to use AI planning for conducting clinical trial protocols and comply with all the requirements that are specified in these protocols. AI planning has been used also to control the state of patients in intensive care units. It also has been used to evaluate the risk and the consequences of a specific treatment improving the shared decision-making process between patients and physicians. Finally, it has been used to prepare treatment plans for the actions that need to be carried out over a patient. Uh, this topic is the center, the focus of this talk, as you will see in a few slides. But before, people may think that uh, applying artificial intelligence to medicine um, it's not uh, appropriate and uh, many people don't trust computer that much. So I can show you some uh, numbers um, about the estimation of medical errors that are committed by uh, physicians. Um, this is a report of the Institute of Medicine where between 44,000 and 98,000 deaths were estimated each year in US, US hospitals and 1 million injuries also are estimated each year in these hospitals. Then a uh, follow-up study found that medication errors are among the most common medical mistakes and they could, could harm at least 1 point million people every year. So it is clear that physicians need support for their actions and um, in the medical scope there is a relevant movement known as evidence-based medicine. So uh, this paradigm try to collect the best evidence um, for treating patients with a specific conditions. Then a set of experts um, collect all this information and put them in narrative clinical guidance and protocols. They use this guidance and protocols with the idea to of improving the quality of the care process and the idea also to reduce the deviations in the clinical practice according to these protocols, to guide the collection of data, to interpret and manage much better the patient status, and to improve the decision support. Of course, if we are able to computerize this knowledge, we can create system to alt activate alerts and reminders for the physicians and the patients. So, if, if we um, try to see how to use AI planning for, for planning the therapy of a patient, we will see that uh, the requirements in this domain are higher than in typical toy problems. Uh, and this is uh, due to the unpredictable nature of this domain. So in this domain we will need um, several um, uh, specific sub-processes, not only plan generation, but it's really, really important for the safety of the patient to verify the plan. Uh, of course, we need to provide a visualization of the plan to execute the plan 
to modify the plan and finally the plan critiquing which is to analyze if the plan uh, being executed is, uh, is, is correct so it has any problem regarding the original knowledge so there are several challenges uh, of course related to these uh, processes uh, one of the challenges is the knowledge engineering we need to, uh, uh, to uh, accomplish the acquisition of knowledge and the verification and validation uh, then we have the temporal representation of management. Many different temporal constraints are usually found in these guidelines. Then another problem is the data integration. We need to evaluate with real data in the hospital databases. And we need to integrate this into the planning domain. And of course, the exception handling due to this uh, unpredictable nature, there are many cases in which the human, the, the physician, needs to um, interact with the plan and uh, needs to change the plan according to a specific uh, event that has happened. Another important uh, or one of the important uh, issues is the temporal monitoring. So this, in this domain the states, events, actions, plans, goals and effects, all of them are constrained by temporal uh, information. And it, this makes uh, monitoring uh, the states of uh, an event during the execution uh, very uh, necessary. Also the state's model of a plan engine may need to consider more than the plan generation. So it could be needed to suspend the plan or to check if this is completed, um, what are the conditions for aborting the plan and so on. So it's not only plan generation, it's more uh, dynamic. And of course the domain is not static and these unpredictable events mm -hmm can occur and this depends really on uh, your needs. Of course in high frequency domains like uh, intensive care, care unit uh, this is uh, uh, more relevant um, but there are also low frequency domains where the physicians only want uh, to have a plan of the treatment to follow in the next uh, days. Another important requirement is the management of the care team view. So medicine is supplied by a team of physicians, uh, nurses and so on. So we have different roles and they use a number of resources for uh, accomplishing um, the treatment. For example, x-ray machines. So the plans to be generated from the clinical protocols may need to consider these institutional constraints and they um, should deliver a personalized plan for patients but also for physicians. So we will uh, explain very quickly um, a real project that was carried out uh, in the south of Spain. It's called the Oncotherapy. Um, and here in this uh, project, the oncologists uh, were required to apply clinical guidance for treating um, several patients. And these guidelines, or protocols in this case, um, they had a lot of temporal constraints. And they have all these requirements that we talk about. They want to have a personalized care process for patients and uh, medical staff. And they want to reduce uh, the time that they uh, ex spend uh, on preparing this treatment. This is an architecture that considers all the requirements that we talk about. So if we start uh, looking at the numbers uh, of inside the boxes, uh, and we start on number one on the left hand side of the screen on the bottom, can see that clinicians are responsible for defining this narrative guidance, then uh, knowledge engineers formalize this knowledge using what is known as computer interpretable guidelines, which are language um, to computerize this uh, knowledge. Then we have a SIG connector that is able to uh, move from this formal knowledge into a planning specification. Um, for this, of course, we will need to include um, the connection with the electronic health record from the hospital and the hospital information system. Then having this specification created and also considering all the temporal constraints, we use a plan generation engine a planner. In this case, we use a hierarchical task network planner and we generate um, a care pathway personalized for the patient. This care pathway can be delivered in the form of a GAN diagram to the physician 
so they can see uh, all the actions uh, uh, following specific time recommendations. And we can also deliver um, or deploy this care pathway using a business process management engine. And this is uh, software to um, possibly rem um, execute the plan remotely. And so each role, is each uh, clinician or nurse can enter through this portal and follow the plan. Of course, in number six, we have another module, which is for repairing the plan and for replanning. And this will be needed in the case that we want to include the management of unexpected events. So, what do we get? This is a fragment of the care pathway that, that we can have as a result of uh, using this planning uh, technique. So we have the start and end date for each uh, step, uh, the duration, if it's part of a um, higher level um, chemotherapy cycle, the oncologist that needs, needs to carry out the action, the action itself, for example, administration of prednisone, which is a, a drug, the patient and the dosage of the drug. On the bottom of the screen, we can see how to deploy this into a PPN engine so that the physicians can ubiquitously execute this plan. So this is all. Here in the last slide, you have uh, some references that you should uh, uh, try to read in case that you have more interest in this uh, wonderful domain. And I hope that you have enjoyed the talk and you enjoy also the rest of the course. Thank you very much.